Hi friends, David here from Learn Stage Lighting, and to wrap up this month on networking, I want to talk about networking for really large events, larger events even, and show you how it's not a far cry from these small event setups that we talked about in the, the last video. It's actually not that different at all. So here we're looking at the Super Bowl uh, LIV from 2020, the halftime show lighting network system, which I couldn't remember who it was, but now I remember it was, uh, oh, who were they? It was two ladies who were singing. Oh man, I don't remember. It doesn't matter. So anyways, they've got the network drawings here on live design online. So give them all the credit here. We'll make sure to link to that below as well. Um, and uh, we'll go ahead and just pop that in my spreadsheet and then I want to look at the lighting network diagram okay so there's a few things that we're going to notice going into this and I want to point it out as we get into this here okay it's really simple here okay so they have a general lighting and video network uh, general show control network and they could have split these out into different networks but they're tapping into probably existing infrastructure in the stadium. So between different locations where they need network signal, they're using fiber, uh, which is just uh, a good way to send a lot of data a long distance. That's really the main difference between that and ethernet based approaches, which top out at about 330 feet. Um, and so what they've got here, really simple. They've got their consoles here. So here's lighting consoles, pyro consoles, video consoles, and then, uh, oh, the flashy bracelet console, consoles, okay? And they've got different priority set. That's an MA thing. Um, but look at what they've got here going on here. This is really simple, okay? For the lighting system, they have static IP addresses set for everything, okay? The lighting consoles, I believe, are set to the... Uh, 10 dot range so they're kind of their own se separate network and these are vlans that's more complicated than you typically need to get um then they've got pyro they're on the 192.168.2 range uh for um probably for for maybe connecting to each other and then their other network port or maybe just connecting to the laser computer actually and then the other port is 10.66 is the range dot zero and that's for connecting uh to their devices out on the field okay um then the ip address range for video is 192.168.0 as you can see there um and any artnet data that video is sending out is also on 10.66 so what we see here basically is between all these consoles, all this stuff that, that they're using, um, the main lighting consoles, Artnet, for all of the fixtures, whether it's coming from uh, PixMob, the, the bracelets, whether it's coming from uh, the, the video, whether it's coming from lighting and pyro, all the Artnet data is 10.66 range, okay? But then ultimately, the network setup is actually really kind of simple okay you have different network switches that all connect to each other uh throughout the stadium and then they just use vlans which is just it's just virtual networks basically to keep uh the different consoles and to keep the uh the pyro and lasers separate from each other that's all that it is you don't have to get fancy you don't have to set up a bunch of rules um in a lot of in a lot of uh circumstances but of course for the super bowl they do then they've got fiber between these different switches. And if you, if you zoom out and zoom in and, and look around at this a lot, all you're going to see basically is really simple. Every device has static IP addresses like I talked about. So you know where the device is if you need to log into it to configure or connect one device to another. Um, and that's really it. They just plug them all into basic switches. I don't think there's a router in this system. And when you're shooting a lot of data, that makes sense. It talks about uh, things like, uh, you know, firmware to, to run, to make sure everything runs successfully with each other. Um, and that's really it. Okay. Um, 
They keep it simple. They turn off any features in their network that they need to uh, and keep things as light as possible. They don't use a router. Keep things simple. Okay. Uh, looking down, they have a few other diagrams here that are useful. So they show some of the carts that have these uh, kind of video panels on them with a bunch of LEDs. It just shows you the setup for them. And that's really it. So I admit, this might be one of the most boring videos ever because it just walks through uh, just quickly, you know, a network set up for a really big event. And when you get into doing larger events, the only thing that changes is not really like the complication of setting things together or like figuring out how it works together. You know, in general, it's just basic switches plugged together. Maybe a router if you need some wireless control, but but ultimately, when it comes down to it, these networks are simple. What makes them work and work well are they use good quality cables. You know, they don't go buy the cheapest thing off the shelf. They connect as much stuff together wired as possible. I think everything's wired. And they have really good and detailed diagrams and plans. You know, I'm sure there's spreadsheets that show each device so that they have all the IP addresses laid out. And they just follow the plan. And you know what? It works. And that's the cool thing about this. Networking, I know, can feel really mystical to people. And if you didn't do networking in the past, you haven't done it, maybe you're not young, and you, you think it, it, there's a lot of mystery to it, but there really doesn't have to be. If you take the time with networking a show of any size, just take a little bit of time and think about the different devices you have, write it down, assign IP addresses, figure out how it's going to hook together, go, okay, I can plug these couple things in a switch, those couple things in a switch, plug those two switches together, set some static IP addresses, and I'm home free. It really doesn't have to be that complicated. So I hope you've enjoyed this video, and if you're just tuning in, check out the rest of this playlist that we'll link to below. Until next time, guys, thanks for watching. I hope you enjoy the rest of your week, and we'll see you guys here for our next video on Warren Stage Lighting, as long as you're subscribed. Thanks.